welcome welcome to this session on healthy living and fitness this session is the exercise in yoga we have already discussed about exercise in the previous session that is part 1 now in this session we'll talk about the yoga i'm sure that all of you are aware about that why we do yoga in general terms we practice yoga for health related reason such as for well being and for make us fitness and to help control stress this yoga is also help in managing and prevent the health problem there lot of research has been done so far in the past and at present also number of research is going on on the benefits of the yoga on different position postures breathing techniques of the yoga etc so we can say that this yoga is become very popular as a way of promoting physical and mental well being sometime this yoga is called a, as a meditative movement practice you might have heard the terminologies like asanas pranayam uh, meditation that is dhyan etc today we are going to discuss some of them the basics of the yoga and what is the benefit of this yoga now let's start now the first is what is yoga so this word yoga is derived from a sanskrit word that is yog in hindi this yog means jod and in english it is its mean is joining what actually this jod or joining means actually this is the joining of the human with the god that is jivatma with the parmatma this practice is considered as a practice of self realization and the achieving the god yoga is another form of physical exercise however this physical exercise a little different than the general physical exercise how like by doing the physical exercise one person can develop only body muscles but through yoga a person can achieve the conditioning of even all the internal organs like heart brain spleen liver lungs intestine etc apart from these vital organs through yoga we can also conditioning the gland like thyroid gland pituitary gland even brain as well as we can make the function of these gland better this yoga has a very positive effect on the all body parts and it is an ancient art which is based on the some harmonizing system for the development of body mind and spirit truly speaking this yoga practice will not only lead you to a sense of peace and well being but also this practice give you a feeling of being with the nature and nowadays because it's originated from india this practice is not followed by only indians this practice is followed by throughout the globe so as i said that the yoga is a union between the mind body and spirit it involves the practice of some physical postures and poses and these physical postures and poses they are known as asan in sanskrit as the name suggests the ultimate aim of practicing yoga is to create a balance between the body and the mind and ultimately to attain a self alignment 
So when we try to accomplish it, this practice of yoga make us use of makes use of a uh, different movement, breathing exercise, relaxation technique, and meditation. So this yoga is associated with a healthy and lively lifestyle with a balanced approach. This science of yoga has its origin thousands of years ago. There are many theories which are associated with yoga and this is also mentioned in Rig Veda that the, it was found in the oldest civilization of Indus Saraswati. And this Indus Saraswati uh, civilization is considered to be more than 500 years old. So we can say that this yoga is older than 5000 5, uh, years. This yoga was invented by Rishi Munis. Generally, they, these Rishi Munis, they were practicing. All the time they were practicing the meditation. And this meditation was their part of the life, part of their life. Now, after the Veda period, there was a Maharishi who was known as Maharishi Patanjali. This person created the system in the yoga. He created some text and which was named as Patanjali Yoga Sutras. And there, because it was the very important uh, sutras, so they are considered as the backbone of the yoga. And based on that, this yoga practice is uh, divided in the following period. Just like pre-Patanjali period, Patanjali period and post-Patanjali period. That means uh, which are related to before 500 BC, 500 BC to 800 AD and post-Patanjali period is 800 AD onwards. Now if we talk about the journey of the yoga in India to the world. So for many years this yoga is actually restricted to heart yoga and asan heart yoga with the hand and some asan that is the posture the, that is the posture and in this yoga three sutras are dedicated to asan and in this the heart yoga is a preparatory process so that the body can sustain a higher level of energy and in this process of heart yoga the, the, the process begin with the body then breathe and then the, then the mind to the inner self. In short we can say that this yoga is a therapy or exercise system for health and fitness but always remember that the physical and mental health is the ultimate or natural consequence of the yoga and the goal of yoga is more far reaching and there are number of traditional school of yogas and they have different philosophies they have different tradition just like uh, guru shishya tradition of yoga they are uh, the Janan Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Dhyan Yoga, Patanjali Yoga, etc. And these schools, they have, each of these schools, they have, they have their own principles and practices, which leading to the ultimate aim and objective of the yoga, to make the people fit and healthy. Now come to the yoga terminologies. You might have heard about the asan. So the first is asan. These asan, these are the body posture in the yoga ashtang. What, a, what is ashtang? It is the eight limbs of the Ayurveda. Sorry, uh, yoga, yoga, eight limbs of yoga. Now, this eight limbs of yoga 
is basically Patanjali's classification of the classical yoga and just name the observances, posture, meditation, concentration, breathing, withdrawal, etc. In Sanskrit, they have different terminologies, different words for this. So, these eight limbs basically they form a sequence from the outer to the inner. Next is Dosh. As per the Ayurveda, the body uh, is of three types. One is Vit, that is fire, Vat, that is air, and Kaf, that is earth. And actually, these Doshas or Dosh, Vat, Pit, and Kaf, they are the three different types of energy of the body. And we all are made up of the unique combination of these three forces. Every one of us has some of each, what pit and cup. And most of people, they sometimes they have abundance of one or two of doshas. And sometimes there is something missing of the doshas. Now this unique combination actually, it's a it's a blueprint of the nature and the proportion of each of these three doshas they constantly fluctuate according to the environment according to the diet according to the season climate age and some other factor and when these dosha they move in and out of the body they disturb the, they affect the health, energy level and sometimes mood. The next is pranam. This pranam is the control of breath. Actually, the pranam is comes from the prana, pran. That means it is the breath or vital energy in the body. That is pran. And ayam means control. So pranam is a control of breath. These pran they are of five types, and these pran like uh, pran, apana, vayan, udan, saman, and the most important are the pran and apana. That means it is the flowing of the air to and fro. Just like the pran is the upward flowing of the air or the breathing and the pan is downward flowing. And based on this, the pranam is of several types. Just like natural breathing, basic abdominal breathing, yogic breathing, deep breathing, fast breathing. And if you talk in Hindi, or in Sanskrit, they have different pranams like vilom, and you have heard this thing, anulom vilom exercise, which is the alternate nostril breathing. This vilom is actually the interrupted breathing, and anulom vilom is alternate nostril breathing. One one time from the left nostril, and one time the next time is from the right nostril. Cooling breathing, but it is the Shikali or also known as the Kaki Mudra. So these are some of the types of the prana. Mudra, actually this mudra is the, the gesture, just like we do with the two fingers. Uh, that means uh, the hand gesture during the yoga practice we follow. Right? So that is known as Hast Mudra in yoga. Now, so this is power yoga that gives a very good intense feeling well, while we do the Ashtang yoga, that is the eighth limb of the yoga. Now, this picture you can see that these are the dosha, the pit is 
equal to the fire plus water. The what is equal to air plus ether. Cuff is equal to water plus air. Now let's see what we should do during yoga. You all aware that it's an old saying, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. And we all know that it is a universal age. If you are a yoga practitioner or you are a yoga follower, both, you go to bed early, have a sound sleep and get up early in the morning. After that, you can attain, attend the nature's call, wash the mouth, eat thoroughly, take a bath and start yoga in fasting. And it is advisable that if you are waking up in the morning and practicing yoga, it must be started with the Brahma Muhurat. Brahma Muhurat is actually a particular time, you might have heard about this, that the most important time when the concentration and the energy level of the body is maximum, this time is a start with around 4.30 am in sharp, 4.30 around and it goes up to 5.30 am in the morning. So this is the Brahma Murat, Murat. Now yoga can also be practiced one hour after a liquid diet. It can also be practiced 3 hours after some refreshment or it can be practiced 5 hours after a full meal. Practice yoga before the bath but in case you have taken the bath then wait for some time. But when you are taking bath before the yoga, always give a rest to the body. And if you are doing yoga before the bath, then also you have to wait for some time. This yoga is generally practiced on a leveled floor in a room where doors and windows they are open and there is a good flow of air and light. There must be good light and there must be a good flow of air. Generally, it is recommended that a person should not practice yoga directly on the ground or some cement floor. That person must use a carpet, a blanket or some clean cloth, sit on it and then start yoga practice. No, there are four different streams of yoga and it is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, these are the four paths and these four paths are the Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Janan Yoga and Karma Yoga and these four paths, number of people they following their own path means some like Raj Yoga, some yoga, uh, people like Bhakti Yoga and some like Jaran Yoga and Karma Yoga. This Raj Yoga is actually the uh, yoga which was practiced by the Patanjali and so uh, the Patanjali, the Maharishi Patanjali was a follower of Raj Yoga and this yoga is practiced to gain the mastery over the mind through willpower and there are further uh, two, uh, several branches of this Raj Yoga like Bahiranga Yoga, uh, Antaranga Yoga. Now next is Bhakti Yoga. So this Bhakti Yoga it helps a person to evolve emotional maturity to spread the love for society, to spread the message of the brotherhood and oneness. Janan Yoga 
it helps in developing a logical mind with intuitive knowledge and immense awareness and this last karma yoga it is actually uh, the mentioned in the bhagavad gita and this karma yoga is further elaborated by swami vivekananda and it help in uh, take out the person from the delusion confusion or when somebody is in craving of desires egoism etc but this karma yoga also play a very important role now the eight limbs of ashtang yoga this is yam niyam asan pranam pratyahar dharan dhyan samadhi this yam is about the universal morality and these yam are basically the ethical rule in hinduism there are five yams just like ahimsa satya asatya brahmacharya aprigrah which is the non possessiveness so like ahimsa this is non violence satya is truthfulness asatya is non stealing and brahmacharya is the chastity and uh, aprigrah is the non possessiveness niyams this is the second component of this uh, the ashtang yoga and it include uh, basically it include the uh, habits and the observances like soch santosh taps and uh, swadhyay ishwar pranidhan asan which is the posture the posture that can hold for a period of time is staying relaxed steady comfortable and motion pranam pranam as we discuss the this pranam is breathing exercise pratyahar this prati aha the this is the prati aha basically so it's a combination of two uh, different words uh, which is the prati that is the against and ahar is the fetching or bring near prati ahar and this is for the to take the attention or to drawing the attention within one or the getting the awareness next is dharana means concentration introspective focus dhyan it is literally meaning is contemplation reflection meditation samadhi it meaning putting together joining combining union so these are the eight limbs of ashtang yoga now let's see some yoga poses for the beginners these yoga poses they are the asans and they are the physical posture that the which is required for our entire body to stretch and tone the muscles and joints spine and we can say that entire skeletal system and these asans they have a beneficial effect not only on the body but also on the internal organs gland nerves etc these asanas they reduce the stress enhance relaxation and revitalize the body mind and spirit you can see in the picture that there is a adho mukha tvasan which is a down for uh, downward facing pose vrakasan virbhadra 2 vashishta yoga etc and they have they have the english meaning now these are the yoga poses for beginners 
so if you are a new to yoga so please go through these exercises in yoga practice next is pranam as we discussed that pranam is a control of breath prana is upward flowing and apana is downward flowing there are several types of this pranam natural breathing uh, basic abdominal breathing deep breathing fast breathing and uh, vilom breathing anu vilom pulling breath ujjayi brahmari surya bhedan etc now what are the benefits of yoga so as throughout this session we are discussing the benefits of yoga obviously this is for making us full of concentration fitness health so this yoga it improves the immunity and by improve, improving the immunity immunity we can protect our body from number of diseases by yoga we can make our heart healthy and protect our heart from heart problems it improved the body flexibility and so flexibility because the flexibility gives our body a protection from the injury improve body postures which gives a very better personal image give personality good personality positivity in mind just like the protection and that positivity in mind gives protection from hypertension depression and stress yoga also help in reducing the weight and also help in increasing the weight if somebody is lean the person if start there some specific yoga so that person start weighting uh, gaining the weight improved muscle strength and also improved the vitality all energy in the body so these are some of the basics of the exercise and yoga so far we have discussed i hope that everyone understand what is the benefit of exercise and what is the benefit of yoga and what are some basics of exercise and yoga always remember if you do any exercise if you follow any yoga practice do it under some trainer there are some youtube channels those who train online you can also follow them they are certified but if they are not certified do not do the yoga practice do not do any that any exercise if they are not certified all right so thank you thank you for the session